uh, fall out under fire monitoring policy. And um, how that works essentially is higher rates and higher prices will be demand destructive in the long run because you know households are just facing a lot more constraints in terms of servicing their existing debt that they have to resort to spending less on things that are more discretionary than, uh, goods and services as well, which then leads the economy into sort of a slower state. So that sort of narrative has not changed and has since become consensus almost when we talk about the economic outlook for 2023. So uh, that's what's really under, uh, underpinning you know, the numbers right here as well. But to put things into context, so the unemployment rate from here and now, um, look at the chart on the right here, so roughly 1.2, 1.3% uh, bottom to peak increase in the unemployment rate. If you put that into the context of historical downturns, it's not a huge increase. So that's how we like to categorize this upcoming downturn. You know, instead of putting a plus sign or a minus sign in front of the growth rate, we like to more to stress on the fact that you know, do expect things to start slowing down more significantly. I think that's a broader takeaway uh, from here and now. Um, but there are a lot of churn or resistance that are currently in the economy as well as the labor market. You know, starting from labor market, there's acute labor shortages that's widespread across sectors. And households on the spending side have a lot of savings as well. So, you know, this time we've been getting a lot of questions in terms of how long exactly is the life of like 